me just uh, share with you just a brief announcement, um, letting you know real quickly, um, men's night this Friday night, 6.30 p.m. We'll let you know uh, location-wise. If, you, if you're uncertain, give me a call. Um, I can let you know as that unfolds this week. We'll let, be letting you know where that's going to take place and all that good stuff this, this weekend coming up Friday night. Um, and uh, I want to just jump into God's Word with you today. We're going to be taking a look back into Luke chapter 5. We haven't finished with the chapter yet. We're still in it. We're going to look at a few verses today. So once you get there, Luke chapter 5, would you just stand with me as we jump into God's Word? We're just going to read a few verses this morning. Chapter 5, beginning in verse 27. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Page 834. In my Bible, that is. I can see it now. Somebody's searching for page 834. Verse 27. Says later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi left everything and followed him. Later, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples. Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. Father, we thank you for your word today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you take us back to that moment in time and, and open our eyes that we would see the things that, that, that you saw when you were there. And teach us today. Deposit something within us, Lord. And Lord, if, if, if the, it's necessary to remove some things from us, I ask you to do that too. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to remove every distraction, tear down every wall. Lord, just, just uh, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to thank all of you for watching us online, too, and uh, just want to encourage you as well, if you have the opportunity to get here and uh, worship with us in person, uh, what a difference it makes. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Verse 27, it says, Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth, he says this to him, follow me and be my disciple. I mean, if there was ever a time to walk off your job, <laughs> right? Can I get a witness, right? I mean, wouldn't that be a pretty good time? Jesus is calling you to follow him. That'd be a time to walk off your job, right? I mean, listen, how many of you know that Jesus doesn't see what everyone else sees? You know, one of the things I noticed here in this text, is this, as short as it is in these few verses, is Jesus doesn't see what everybody else sees. He sees potential. That's, that's what I got out of this. I was like, man, Jesus, Jesus saw such potential here in Levi. When everyone else looked at Levi, they saw a tax collector, maybe even a crook, someone who took advantage of others, and one who was hated by many. And yet what Jesus saw in Levi, the tax collector, was the potential to follow. You see, did you know only a small percentage of people on this planet will, will achieve a significant portion of their true potential? Let me say that again. 
Only a small, a very small percentage of people on this planet will ever achieve a significant portion of their true potential. For many, their potential remains untapped because they're not willing to follow the one who overcame. You see, potential is not what you have done, but what you can do. Potential is not what is, but what could be. And I'm, I'm just assuming here, but, but Levi had probably already been dreaming within his heart of what it must have been like to become one of Jesus' followers. I mean, no doubt he had heard the stories and, and thinking of, of man, what he could do and, and what he could become if he was a follower of Jesus. And so when the call came to follow, he did three things. Verse 28 says, he got up, he left everything, and followed him. And that leaves all of us with a question. What are you doing with Jesus? What are you doing with Jesus? What is becoming of your life with Jesus? I mean, if you want to discover your potential in him, you have to be willing to get up. Can I get a witness? You have to be willing to get out of everything that is keeping you from reaching your potential in Him. I mean, I can't speak for anyone else, but I know for myself, when, I, when, when, when the call came to follow Him, I got up. And beloved, i got to keep getting up because there are so many things in this life that will keep trying to bring you down. When it says He left everything, I believe He left anything and everything that would keep Him from following Jesus. And He left anything and everything that would keep Him from reaching His potential to follow. What is potential? It's dormant ability. It's untapped strength. It's unused success. Hidden talents. Capped capabilities. Oh, somebody's getting ready to have the lid blown off their potential today. I can just see it in the spirit. And please hear me, beloved, because I believe that many of you in the room, many of you watching online, you have this wealth of potential living within you. This dormant ability, this untapped strength and unused success, this hidden talent and cap capability. And, and just as we have all been called to follow Him, we have to realize that there are some things that we have to keep getting up from. There are some things that have been weighing us down and keeping us from discovering and tapping into our potential to follow. There are some things that we need to leave behind like the hurt and the pain of the past, brokenness, hate, bitterness, resentment, anger, frustration, false accusations, greed, lust, addiction, and sin, and the list could go on and on. What is it that you need to leave behind today? What is weighing in on you? Bringing you down? Keeping you from getting up and robbing you from your potential to follow Him in a way that you should? You see, I believe the reason most never reach their potential in life is because of the work that it takes to get there. So many within the church are stuck in sin and we don't want to get up and we don't want to get out because we see ourselves as the victim and we're too hooked on our pain, too stuck on our excuses, buying into the lie that we'll never reach our potential. For many, we justify all this by looking at those like Adam. All the way back to Adam. And how about Samson? How about Moses, if you will? Did he reach his fullest potential in God? Come on, somebody and many others throughout God's Word. And we use this and we think that we'll never reach our potential in following Him because of... But, but can I just tell you something? You, you wonder, okay, why, why are they in there? These stories of those who didn't quite reach their potential. They're there to spur us on so that the same thing doesn't happen to us, and so that we don't miss out on everything that God has for us, so that we reach our fullest potential in Him. So we know that it's possible. It's possible, and I be beloved, I believe it. I believe there's some of you in this room, you have been missing out on the potential that God has deposited within you. Listen, we have to keep listening to the truth, don't we? Because Jesus said, you shall know the truth, 
and the truth will set you free. You see, how do you live out your fullest potential in him? In Acts 17, 28, it says, In him we live and move and have our being. It goes on and it says, as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. How do we live out our potential in him? We live as sons and daughters. We move and have our being in him. Not just some of the time, but all the time. In and through every circumstance, every situation that life throws at us. As sons and daughters of the king, we have the potential. We have the potential to get up and to leave all the hindrances and trouble and chaos and the mundane in order to follow him. Remember, he sees within you the potential to follow. He sees this within each and every one of you, the potential to follow. That's why he called you out of darkness and into the light. He also saw this in, in Levi, and, and he sees this in you, and he sees this in me, and that is the potential to lead. I said the potential to lead. You see, he saw the potential to follow, but, but, but then something happens. As you begin to follow Christ, you begin to, to experience the potential to lead. In verse 29, it says later, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. And many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with him. I mean, we all have the potential to lead others to Jesus. But the question is, is so why aren't we? We all have the potential to lead others to Jesus. Why aren't we? Why don't we? I mean, God created the heavens and the earth to operate on this principle. Potential can only be fulfilled when it is shared. I said potential can only be fulfilled when it is shared. Much of creation abounds with this truth. I mean, the sun does not exist for itself. Plants release oxygen for us. We provide carbon dioxide for the plants. Even a bee receives nectar as it pollinates the flowers. No potential exists for itself. It's like the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And this fruit is so that all those around us would taste and see that he's good. You see, potential can only be fulfilled when it's shared. Who are you sharing the fruit of the Spirit with? Who are you sharing your faith with? I said, who are you sharing your faith with? In other words, it's, it's about time that we wake up and realize our potential to lead others to Christ and we actually do something about it. You see, knowing potential can only be fulfilled when it's shared simply means that you and I need to take action. We must become those who are willing to share our faith with all those that we come into contact with. I mean, you have the potential to overcome the silence and to redeem the time, and to rule and reign in this earth, to take dominion and authority over all the powers of the enemy. I mean, all the resources of heaven have been given to you so that you would have the potential to lead others to Christ. Just look at Acts 1.8, and you'll see where this potential comes from. This potential that maybe some of you in the room are lacking today, because maybe at some point in time someone told you you didn't need it, or it wasn't for you, or it wasn't for today. But it says here, Jesus' words, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You'll receive power when what? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The reason many of us are not experiencing the potential to lead others into the kingdom is because we're missing out on the Holy Spirit. You're awful quiet today. <clears throat> 
also re reminded, want to share with you in Matthew 25, in verse 31. It says, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered in his presence. And he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Gerald. Um, then the king will say, <laughs> I, had to, I had to throw that in there, I'm sorry. Sandy just got a few goats and... I had to throw that in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you're a goat. It's not what I'm, I'm I need to clarify that. And, but uh, anyways, so pray for you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then these, these righteous ones will reply, Lord, Lord, when, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When, when did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. You see, the potential to lead, sometimes I, I guess we, we, we think that it has to be in this way, but there's so many ways in which we can lead others to Christ. Offering a cup of cold water to someone, visiting someone when they're sick, a card, you know, a, a, a note, um, just, I mean, come on, somebody. Don't miss out on the potential to lead those around you to Jesus. Sometimes it's not by words, by what we say, but by our actions, by what we do. We're going to see that here in just a moment. The third thing I want to point out to you, so he saw in Levi, and he sees in you the potential to follow, the potential to lead, and the potential to influence. <laughs> the potential to influence. Verses 30 through 31. Look, the Pharisees, they're not too fair, you see. The teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples. Notice he complained to the disciples. They, they, I mean, they, they complained, the religious leader, they complained to the disciples. Why do you eat and drink with such scum? But who, who answers them? Jesus, right? He says healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. And I've come not to call those who think they're righteous, If you didn't mean to step on your guy's toes or anything, right? After all, you're probably only wearing sandals. But, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. I mean, as a follower of Christ, you have the potential to influence all those you come into contact with. And here's the thing, like Levi or Matthew, if you will, whose potential to influence has far outlived his earthly life. I mean, if you think about it, his influence through writing the Gospel of Matthew is still influencing many today. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You and I have the greatest potential to influence the lost, the hurting, the broken, the addict, the sinner, the sick, the lonely, the outcast, and those who are far from Jesus. The only question is, is how are you using your potential to influence those around you for Christ? I honestly believe if we would all just focus on influencing one life at a time. <laughs> oh, beloved. I've said it so many times before, man. If we would just take and just say, God, just give me one soul, one person that I could influence for you. We wouldn't have enough room if everyone in the church began to do that. We wouldn't have enough room in this place to hold everybody. 
That's the truth. One life at a time. And in order to do that, we have to be willing, first and foremost, to choose them, to teach them, and to show them. I mean, come on. What we see through the life of Christ is him influencing the twelve, and even pulling in just a little bit closer the three, right? Peter, James, and John, right? I mean, he was influencing them. And he influenced them, and they went out and influenced the world. I mean, think about it. Think about the person that, that you could be influencing for the kingdom. You have the potential to influence them, and the influence that they too could have, and how your, your influence can outlive you through the lives of others who are influencing. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what Jesus did? I mean, the potential to influence comes when we choose to pray for somebody. In other words, talk to God about them before you talk to them about God. Right? Start praying for somebody. Maybe it's somebody that you haven't had an interaction with on an ongoing basis. Maybe it's a neighbor or a coworker, even a friend or a family member for all that matters. But choose to pray for somebody, engaging them where they are interacting with them, looking for opportunities to serve them and bless them. Listen, beloved, you, you don't think this works? It worked for my mom and dad. And I'm so thankful that there was a couple that was willing to seize their moment of opportunity and to take the potential to influence someone's life. And they didn't lay it aside and make excuses for it. No, they took it by the horns and they went for it and they did it and they influenced my parents' life and my parents' life would never be the same as a result of it. But how many other people are out there just like my parents? People that are up in years that 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 it looks like there's no hope for them. I mean, for 30 years, 30 years, from the moment I got saved, 30 years, and finally my parents would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord. These people were looking for opportunities to serve them and bless them, to get to know them, and intentionally deciding to pour into their life. Listen, the potential to influence comes when we teach them. I, I remember hanging up the phone with my dad, and I was just looking the other day at texts that he sent me. I reading through them, and but I remember the initial conversation when I was getting ready to hang up the phone from him and he said, guess what I'm doing today? And I said, what? And he said, I'm having a Bible study at the house. I was like, really? Yeah, our, our neighbors are coming over and they've been coming over now every day and we've been studying the Bible for a couple hours. You see, the potential to influence comes when we teach them. And I know maybe, maybe you might be thinking that you don't have what it takes to teach anybody, but listen to me. Get rid of that stinking thinking and stop buying into the lie that you need to be an expert or a know-it-all when it comes to God or even the Bible. I mean, truth be told, not too many people get along with those who think they already know everything about everything. So picture having a conversation with someone over coffee or even a meal, and for the most part, just look for opportunities to share out of your own life's experiences. Be real. Be transparent. Be willing to say, I, I don't know. But I'll find out the answer for you. I mean, what are you learning about life with Jesus? What is he saying to you? How is he making a difference in and through your life? These are things you should be thinking about when trying to teach somebody and taking advantage of the potential to influence them. I mean, the potential to influence comes when, when we use our actions to show them we care. 
I mean, and that comes through our words, our, our attitudes and our lives. We, we show them what it means to be a true follower of Christ. Through each and every moment with Jesus, the disciples watched as he showed them he cared for all those who were still stuck in a life of sin and needing to repent. Now I realize in the story preceding this story we got a snapshot of a man who was stuck. Many of you wrote down on a piece of paper what had you stuck. And I pray that 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 is not your story any longer. But sometimes I realize that in as much as we write something down, fold it up, put it on the altar, and try to try to get ourselves unstuck from whatever it is that, that's had us, we, we oftentimes fail because we try to do it in and of our own strength. We, we try to do it on our own. And if that's not working for you, I want to just encourage you to invite some others into that situation with you and ask them to help hold you accountable. That's, what does it say in James chapter 5? In James chapter 5, it says, confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. The reason we don't see that so much within the church today is because we lack trust. I don't want to tell somebody else what I'm struggling with because I don't trust them. And we stay stuck because we want to try to do it our way. We think there's a better way. And the whole time, we have to understand that Jesus came to show us a better way. You see, you have the potential A couple weeks ago, last week was different. We had communion, we had baptisms going on and and all that stuff. But, But a couple weeks ago, you had the potential for freedom. How's that looking for you right now? Oh, I read through some of those papers Monday morning and some of the things that have you. Some of the things that you're stuck on. I, I know, listen, there's, there's people in this church that have the potential for generosity, but they're missing it. And therefore, the church is struggling. If I got to know it, and the board has to know it, I think it's important for you to know it. I mean, we have been hit over and over and over again with things, this church. We had to put a brand new air conditioning on our roof for the sanctuary here so you could be cool. We, we, we had to put a brand new coil and an air conditioner downstairs. All of that stuff combined cost almost $15,000 to the church. All that stuff. Yesterday I had a flood in my basement. We had a leak in a pipe down in the bedroom. We had no idea it was happening for days and our whole carpet was just saturated and soaked. We had to have somebody come in, clean it up and, and, and all that stuff. That's going to be another. And I'm like, Lord, What do we need? We need those that have the potential for generosity to step up and be generous. Because our checkbook last week was down to $457. And if the spirit of generosity doesn't grip a hold of somebody, I'm going to be a bivocational pastor. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that if I have to. I'll do what I need to do. I'm okay with that. But when I talk about that to our board, they don't want that to happen. You know? We 
we have the potential in this church to do so much more. We haven't even scratched the surface. But we have to grasp a hold of the potential that God has deposited within us. In every area of our life. And I'm praying the potential to follow grips a hold of somebody. And I have to say this in closing today that, you know, what ties and connections to the past need to be broken in your life so that you can follow him and reach your potential to follow him. What ties? Listen to me. Look look at me. What ties? What connections to the past need to be broken? What needs to be forgiven? What needs to be let go of? What wall needs to come down? so that you can follow him and reach your potential. You have within you the potential to follow, the potential to lead, and potential can only be fulfilled when it's shared. That's the thing. Potential can only be fulfilled when it's shared. It's not about equal giving, it's about equal sacrifice in the church. It's about everyone doing their part to bring their tithe into the storehouse. And beloved, if everyone, if we ever got to a time when that was to happen, this church would would have an overflow. We would have more than enough for every situation. I've said that. I, I don't know how many times. I'd love to prove it to you. And I could if you were only willing. You have the potential. To live according to God's ways and His Word. What are you doing with it? What are you going to do in the end? Stand before God and have Him show you and say, Man, this is the potential that I had for you, but this is what you chose. Oh, you missed out on so much. So much. I, I don't want that to be your story, my story, anybody's story. And you shouldn't want that either. Potential can only be fulfilled when it's shared. And here's the thing, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, when they sent Him, I mean, the the Father and the Son shared the Holy Spirit when they sent Him to earth. Are you with me? Potential can only be fulfilled when it's shared. And God gave us the greatest opportunity for potential in the Holy Spirit when He sent Him to the earth. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, He gives you and I the power to reach our potential to lead, to reach our potential to follow, to reach our potential to give, to reach our potential to do anything and everything that He's called us to do, to to, to see those around us come into a real and right relationship with Jesus. Amen! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Glory to God! Hallelujah! (laughs) You see, potential to influence, you already have it. The question is, is what are you doing with it? Whose life is changing because of their interaction with you? Who are you influencing in the ways of the Lord? I mean, you have potential. Why? Because this Bible, this book says you're salt and you're light. You have the potential to preserve the truth in this land. You have the potential to be the light in the darkness. You have the potential to be the healing agent in in every situation that you're confronted with. You have the potential to make people thirsty for God. You have the potential because you're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. You are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. You are His masterpiece. You are the apple of His eye. You are sons and daughters of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are overcomers. You are fully equipped for every good work. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You have the potential. Stand to your feet with me this morning. How long does it take? How many times do we have to hear it? Till we really truly grasp a hold of the potential 
to follow, to lead, and to influence. You have what it takes, beloved, every one of you in this room. But I understand there may be some things that just keep getting in your way. I understand that we all endure sometimes difficult things in this life. I know sometimes we, we experience setbacks and, and, and we, but come on. I'm reminded of another guy in the Old Testament, his name was Gideon. And the Lord saw something in Gideon that he didn't see in himself. When he found Gideon, he was in a wine press threshing wheat. How many of you know you don't thresh wheat in a, in a wine press? Yet he was hiding out in that place. His, da, his dad in the backyard had, a, had an idol there to a false god. And yet when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, Mighty man of valor. Gideon's looking, who, me? Is that the wrong guy? He saw something in him that he didn't see in himself. And I'm beloved, I'm here to tell you today that God sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. He sees that you've got the potential to follow, the potential to lead, and the potential to influence people for his kingdom, for his glory, that his name and his fame would spread throughout hearts and lives everywhere. What will you do with it this week? What will you do with it in the days, the weeks, and the months to come? Will you follow? Will you lead? Will you influence somebody? The choice is yours. So right now, I just want to give you some time, and just a moment in time, just to, just to bow your eyes and close your head. Just a moment. Go on. Bow your eyes. Close your head. There you go. Maybe you're here today, and as everything else is shut out, it's just you and him right now. You're here, and you say, man, I, I know this, but I also know that I haven't done much with it. And if that's you, it's just, hey, God, help it to truly change today. Help me to realize my potential in you. And remove the things within me that are trying to bury that potential, that are trying to cover it over, that are trying to render it useless in my life. Remove those things. Pull the things out of me that need to be pulled out of me that would keep me from reaching my potential to follow and lead and influence others for your kingdom. I want to follow you in front of my family, my friends, my coworkers, and all those you place before me. I want to lead them to you. I want to influence them for you for your kingdom, for your glory. Show me how to do it in Jesus' name. Teach me. Show me. Give me somebody that I can walk with through this even. Show me who to go to, who to connect with, that I can encourage and they can encourage me likewise. And help me to remember that no matter who I'm surrounded with, don't let me get so religious that I think they're nothing, that they're not worthy. Like we see a picture in this in this text today, the religious thinking, why do you eat with such scum? Let me never get an attitude that I'm so much better than anybody else. Help me to understand that I, myself, and those around me, that they are something you didn't have, but you wanted, so you made one. Not only am I the apple of your eye, but everyone around me is too. Help me to acknowledge that and help me Help me to, to walk out the potential that you've deposited within me. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to thank all of you for watching us online and you that are still here today. If there is anything at all that you need prayer for, we would love to stand in prayer with you over anything at all. And uh, you just come down front here. We, we would pray with you before you leave. And uh, um, I just want to give a shout out to and a, and a praise report. Um, you know, it was Wednesday night out underneath.